My message this morning is titled, Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. It's one of the promises we have as Christians. We serve a prayer answering God. When we pray, we are not just speaking to the air. We are not talking to the sky. We are not speaking to oxygen and nitrogen. When we pray, we are speaking to God. And God hears and God answers. And there are rules that govern prayer. You don't just say anything anyhow and expect that you receive answers. There has to be uh, an order to prayer. And I'm going to touch on some of them. I cannot touch on everything and I cannot uh, cover everything today. But I'll touch on some of them and then we're going to pray. Please stand with me in your Bibles to Mark's Gospel chapter 11 and uh, verse 22 to 24. Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24. Jesus taught a very profound uh, word on healing, he, uh, on, on faith. He taught his, his disciples about faith. And he taught them based on something that had happened. Jesus has spoken to a fig tree to wither. And, uh, and then they came the next morning and saw that the fig tree had started withering from the roots. The disciples were very amazed how a man could speak to a tree and, and see the results the next day. And Jesus used that to teach about faith. The whole issue of cursing the fig tree has a larger symbolism that I'm not going to talk about today because it was rooted to the temple in Jerusalem and how God was going to deal with the temple in the future. But then in the middle, God also, Jesus used the opportunity to also teach on faith. And so let's hear what Jesus said about faith. Mark 11, 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, And does not doubt in his heart, But believe that those things he says will be done, He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Have faith in God. As a matter of fact, in the original text, it sounds more like have the God kind of faith. Have the kind of faith that God operates on. Have faith in God. Operate like God. Have the God kind of faith. But I'm not going to dwell much on verse 22 and 23. I'm going to dwell much on verse 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. I'm going to talk about asking, receiving, and having. Asking, receiving, and having. Prayer is the form by which we approach God and by which we communicate to him, make our request known to him, and by which we also are able to turn situations around. And when we pray, sometimes in prayer, we ask for things. And the Bible says, when we ask, God hears. So, let's talk about asking. If we have faith in God, then we can confidently ask God to act on our behalf. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, 
When you pray, you say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That simply means that God wants to make our lives here on earth like heaven. God wants us to enjoy heaven on earth. Earth must not be a life of deprivation, of pain, of sorrow, of defeat. Earth must be like heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we have an open invitation to come to God in prayer. And a lot of prayer with fasting. So how do we ask? I'm going to show you four ways in which we ask. First, you have to ask specifically. Jesus says, what things soever or whatever things, things, specifics. God wants us to ask for specific things. The old King James version of the verse 27 says, what things soever you desire. We are encouraged to have specific desires. We are to bring those specific desires to God. So you have to find out what do I want specifically? What do I want God to do? What is the thing that I want God to do for me? Do I need wisdom to solve a problem? Do I need a uh, a job do I need good health in one part of my body you can't just say Lord I need good health you have to specify health where Lord heal me heal where you have to be specific God give me a breakthrough what kind Lord I need money how much because you can't just say I need money how much do you need you have to be specific because God wants to do the things we desire, specific things. If your prayer is not specific, then you cannot tell when you have received an answer. You can only tell you've received an answer if there is a specific request, then you can match the request with a response. So there has to be specificity. Now many times people pray general prayers. Oh God, let there be peace in the world. Oh God, solve our problems. Oh God, uh, uh, do something great for me. That's nice. But what great? Because what is great for me may not be great for you. If somebody says, God, I need money. You can, you can bet that if Bill Gates says, Lord, I need money. And you say, Lord, I need money. It's two different kinds of prayer. Your money may be 100 cities. And you can wave your handkerchief and just say, to God be the glory. Somebody too will see 100 cities and despise it. So what specifically do you want from God? This month, what is the specific thing? I need a husband. Which one? Which kind? Because there are some kinds you don't need. <laughs> I need a wife. Which kind? You have to be specific. So when we pray, first ask specifically. Do you need wisdom? Do you need forgiveness for a particular sin? Do you need God to give you joy in place of sorrow? Do you need a particular job? What do you need? Be specific. Instead of having desires and hoping that God will just do whatever he wants to do, prayer must be specific. Number two, prayer must be according to God's will. It must be specific. It must be according to God's will. Ask according to God's will. Now, I want you to imagine that you want something specific. Maybe you want a million cities, specific, or a million and five, specific. But that specific thing 
is in a room that room is God's will because your specific thing must be in God's will so the room or the will of God is the room where your specific desires are stored so if that specific desire is not in the will of God then it has no accommodation even for answer I hope you're understanding that so you have a specific desire but it must be in the will of God it must be in the will of God it's very important because sometimes when we say pray specific people think any kind of prayer will be answered no the Bible doesn't teach that it must be specific but it must be in the will of God it must be covered in the room of God that means that we must first see that our lives are not in our hands but in God's hands James chapter 4 verse 3 and 2 you can write it down it says you lust and you do not have you murder and covert and cannot obtain you fight and war yet you do not have because you do not ask verse 3 and you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss or you ask wrongly for selfish purposes so yes it must be specific but it must fit into god's will and god's will can be discerned in many ways through his word as you read the bible you find the will of god through the leading of the holy spirit you find the will of god through discernment you find the will of god and as you mature spiritually you also find the will of god but primarily through the scripture so our desires must be specific but they must be in the will of god in that room if it's not in the room you can't even have it it's a desire that is outside but if it's in the will of god then there is accommodation for it god can give it to you it's in his will and it's god's will for you to be saved it's god's will for all men to be saved if you pray for your brother to be saved it's in the will of god if you pray for god to heal you it's in the will of god if you pray that god blesses you it's in the will of god but that's there must be something specific about it so you must know the general will of god as well as the specific will of god so specific need in the room the will of god number three you must ask in the name of jesus you must ask in the name of jesus jesus is the door if the will of god is the room the name of jesus is the door to the room so you have a specific will desire it's in a room that's the will of god but you cannot just go and take it you have to come through jesus he's the door without the door your desire is beyond your reach and so when we pray we don't come in our own name in our own power we come in the name of jesus the name of jesus has power on earth in heaven and in the demonic world in john chapter 10 verse 9 jesus called himself the door if we want to enter the room where our specific desires are we must come through the door not through our own might not through our own effort but through jesus when we pray in the name of jesus we make a way to god's will the name of jesus has power the name of jesus has authority when you pray in the name of jesus you are literally telling god don't answer this because of me answer that because of jesus respond to my prayer 
the way you will respond if Jesus prayed. That's what you say when I say, I pray in the name of Jesus. It simply means I've removed myself from the prayer. I've made Jesus the one praying. And if God the Father hears Jesus praying, then when I come in the name of Jesus, God must hear me because it's no longer me, it's Christ in my place. I am not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. I have authority in this church because I'm the senior pastor. But I cannot be everywhere. So sometimes for things to be done, I will meet my staff and I'll say, go and tell X, Y, Z that such a thing should be done in this department. And people will come and say, well, the senior pastor says we must do it this way and that way. Now the person who is issuing the instruction may not be respected. You may not value him. You may think he has no power. But because he has issued the authority in my name, you dare not disobey. Because if you disobey him, you have disobeyed me. At the time when he says, Pastor Otabel says, this is how it should be done. And just check to be sure it's Pastor Otabel who said that. But if he says, Pastor Otabel says, this is how it must be done. It's no longer his authority. It's Pastor Otabel speaking. Why? Because he has come in my name. When, you know, sometimes people say, Christians pray through Jesus. We don't pray through Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Our prayer doesn't go, you know, this way, and then, through Jesus. Then it goes, no, 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 no. We speak to the Father directly in the name of Jesus. So when you say, Father, I come in the name of Jesus, you say, Father, I've removed myself. Now Jesus is the one talking. And because you answered every prayer of Jesus, because I come in his name, you are under obligation to hear him. Because it's no longer me, it's Jesus talking. We pray in the name of Jesus. So you must have a specific desire. That desire must be in the will of God. And you must ask in the name of Jesus. You must trust in the power of the name of Jesus. The efficacy of the name of Jesus. Number four. You must ask in faith. You have a specific desire. It's in the room. The room is the will of God. The room has a door, Jesus. The door has a key, faith. So you can stand behind the door and bang the door and bang the door and bang the door, but nothing will be open to you because faith is what activates Christ to work on our behalf. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you don't believe it and you say it, it's not going to happen. It's like the story of the woman who had a big mountain behind her house. And she read this verse. What thinks her? Whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart believe that it shall be the mountain removes so one day she's tired of this mountain she points to the mountain behind her kitchen and says in the name of Jesus mountain move and she went to sleep next morning mountain was still there and he said well you know I thought as much she didn't believe it the first time there are people who say it but don't believe it you can say in the name of Jesus but you didn't say it in faith you said it as a ritual to prayer. For some people, the name of Jesus is the full stop to the prayer. Oh God, you know, I'm hungry. Oh God, you know, I'm, I'm tired. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. Full stop. Jesus' name. Jesus' name is not a punctuation mark in prayer. You must have faith. And faith is what opens the door to the room where you can take your specific desire. Faith is the key. It's the key. I want you for a moment to imagine yourself. 
you go to your own house there is a door there is a house everything in the house is yours you're standing before behind the house but you have lost the key you can show your id and say well you know this is my house but that won't get you there you can bang on the door boom 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 boom. you can cry in front of the door nothing will happen you have to have the key faith is the key without it you can't please god you know many people think that god responds to our need god does not respond to our need if god just respond to human need there will be no human need in the world god responds to faith so if you have need but you have no faith then you are going to have your need but if you have need and you have faith and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and believing that what God says he is also able to perform and you come by that faith in Jesus name you have access to the will of God and you have access to the specific desires that you have asked God for you come with the key everybody say the key of faith opens the door to the room where my desires are you must have faith and faith is not is not like uh, you know yeah. because people think if they really squeeze their face strong enough then they have faith faith is believing that what God has said he is able also to perform that if God says it then he can do it now why is it so difficult to have faith because faith will always conflict what others have said you read the newspapers it says the economy is going down that's what the newspaper are saying the economists are saying it the financiers are saying it world bank is saying it everybody says the economy is going out but god says i will supply all your need according to my riches in glory so god says the economy is going down but i can still bless you now you have an option either to believe the experts or to believe god and sometimes the voice of the aspect is more convincing than the word of God. And so believing God is very difficult. You believe, yeah, 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 to be okay. But some part of you stay, says, the aspects have spoken. Or you are sick, you go to the hospital. The doctor gives you the opinion. But you read the word of God, it says, by his stripes, you are healed. Now you are torn between believing what the aspect said or what God said. That's why faith is difficult because faith is always fighting human opinion. That's why in Isaiah chapter 53, the question is asked, who has believed our report? Whose report will you believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Whose word will you believe? Who is going to determine what you do? Is it what the experts said or what God said? If I had listened to the experts, I wouldn't be here. But thank God, after the experts have spoken, God also speaks. And the person of faith says, yes, the experts have spoken. I see the evidence. I think it logically. I know it's possible. But God is bigger than the experts. And let God be true and every man a liar. So you believe what God said in the face of contrary evidence. Now if you can do that, you have faith. And that faith is what turns the key to the access to your desires.